Hello everyone. So we are in the session 4 of the chapter Magnetism and Matter. So today the topic I am going to deal with is the Gauss law in magnetism. You have already studied the Gauss law in electrostatics. So today let us see what Gauss law in magnetism states. First, before entering into this statement, I am going to define what is magnetic flux. You all know a magnet produces magnetic field around it. The magnetic field lines are always going to make a continuous closed loop. The magnetic flux is the number of field lines which are going to pass through the closed bound surface. So let me define this magnetic flux. It is the number of magnetic field lines passing through a closed surface and this magnetic flux is denoted by the letter phi p and the SI unit of magnetic flux is Weber. Remember this unit. So what does Gauss law in magnetism states? The Gauss law say, states that the magnetic flux inside the closed bound surface is always equal to 0. If I say this is the closed bound surface, yes. And there are so many number of magnetic field lines which are passing through this. Then the number of magnetic field lines which are entering this bound surface will be equal to the number of field lines which are, ex which are coming out of this bound surface. So the number of field lines which are entering this bound surface is equal to the number of field lines which are coming out of the bound surface. So what is the magnetic flux present in this bound surface? It is 0. There is no net magnetic flux present in this inside this surface. Whatever the magnetic flux which is going in will come out of the bound surface and therefore the magnetic flux inside this bound surface is 0. That is what Gauss law states. So Gauss law statement will be written as It states that the net magnetic flux inside a closed bound surface is equal to 0. This is what the Gauss law in magnetism states. So if I consider this as the closed surface S and these are the magne magnetic flux and these are the field lines which are entering this closed surface then the magnetic flux phi b is equal to the closed integral b dot ds which is equal to 0 according to Gauss law and magnetism. So Gauss law states that whatever the magnetic flux which is inside the closed bound surface is equal to 0. Now let us recall the Gauss law in electrostatics. So what does Gauss law in electrostatics states? If you have a closed bound surface, the line integral of E dot ds that is the electric flux is equal to Q by epsilon naught. That is the electric flux in any bound surface. The net electric flux in a bound surface will be equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed inside that surface. So this charge is the charge which is enclosed inside the closed surface. So if I have charges which are present inside and also outside the bound surface, these Q1 and Q3 are going to produce electric field but 
Q2 is the only charge which is responsible or it is the charge which contributes for the electric flux. So always we are going to consider the charge which is enclosed inside the bound surface. That is what this says. Now when does the electric flux become zero inside this bound surface when the net charge is equal to zero. If this charge net charge becomes equal to zero then I can say the electric flux inside that surface is zero. How can I make this net charge equal to zero by placing an electric dipole. If I have a plus Q and a minus Q charge the net charge becomes zero. Now when I place an electric dipole inside this closed surface the net charge will become zero. When the net charge becomes zero the electric flux will be zero. Now coming back here we have already told that the magnetic flux inside the surface is always equal to zero. It is always zero. But in case of electric flux it will become zero only when I place an electric dipole. That means here the magnetic dipole is present. Can I say that the magnetic flux is zero because we have placed a magnetic dipole here? Yes. That means this law shows us that the magnetic monopoles never exist. We are already seen in the properties that magnetic monopoles never exist. If I have a bar magnet, if I break it, so if I break one bar magnet, it is going to become two pieces of bar magnet with weaker magnetic field, weaker magnetic property. Similarly, uh, we can say that the magnetic monopoles, that is a magnet with only single pole, isolated pole is not going to exist. Because of that, the Gauss law says that inside the closed bound surface, you will never have a magnetic monopole. It, is all, it always comes in dipole and the, because of that, the magnetic flux becomes zero. And one more point is, whatever the magnetic flux is entering bound surface, the same amount of magnetic flux is leaving the surface. Because of that, I can say the magnetic flux again is equal to zero. And this is the reason why we say the magnetic monopole never exist. So this is Gauss law in magnetism. The next topic is the earth's magnetism. In the first session I had mentioned that earth behaves as a magnet. So earth is going to produce magnetic field around it and this magnetic field varies from one place to another and the net magnetic field in of the earth was found to be around 10 power minus 5 tesla. So earth magnetic field is going to vary from one place to another place but uh, just an approximate value it will be equal to 10 power minus 5 tesla. And one more thing I have to mention here uh, the relation between Gauss and Tesla. Tesla is the SI unit of magnetic field strength, Gauss is the CGS unit. So the relation between them is 1 Gauss is equal to 10 power minus 4 Tesla. Remember this value. So coming to Earth's magnetic field, at the beginning it was assumed that a bar magnet is present inside the uh, Earth. That is if I say this is the uh, Earth, they believe that a bar magnet is being placed inside the Earth. Uh, if I am going to suspend a bar magnet freely, it is going to come to rest in the north-south direction. This we all know. And they also said that Earth is, Earth is going to behave like a magnet and it is producing magnetic field. And because of that, they assumed there may be a bar magnet inside the Earth which is making the Earth to produce magnetic field. But inside the core of the Earth, the temperature of the Earth will be very high. It is very hot inside this Earth. And the magnetism cannot exist in this high temperature. And because of that, this assumption was being cancelled. It, it failed. Next, coming to the second point, they discovered that see, the proper discovery of Earth's magnetic field is not done till today. But secondly, they said that inside the Inside the earth, there are different layers like crust, mantle, core and in, in the outer core of the earth, uh, they said that there is iron and nickel, iron and nickel 
which is present in molten state. So the uh, iron and nickel which are present in a molten say, state inside the in, uh, outer core of the earth are making a metallic fluid in which the metallic ions are present and since the earth is making rotation around its own axis so we have an axis and earth will rotate around its own axis all these metallic fluids also are in motion and because of this motion an electric current is being produced and this electric current is the reason for this magnetic field in the earth and this effect is called as dynamo effect. So later it was discovered that the magnetic field uh, is which is produced in the earth is because of this dynamo effect. Now let us see how the earth's magnetic field looks like. So if this is the earth, now there is one axis of rotation. So this is I can say the axis of rotation. This is how the earth is going to make the rotation. So I will name this as and this axis of rotation is named as geographic axis. This is the geographic axis. And this pole is NG which is the north pole. And this pole will be ST the south pole. So we can call this axis as the geographic axis and the pole here which is present at the top is called as the geographic north pole and this is the geographic south pole. And we have a plane which is perpendicular to this geographic axis. The plane which is perpendicular to the geographic axis. And this plane is called as geographic equator. Geographic equator. Next, I am going to draw one more axis. That is the magnetic axis. Now, as, we, as I told you, whenever you are going to suspend a bar magnet, freely it is going to come to rest in the north south direction the magnetic needle never comes to rest in this uh, axis they are going they are tilted by some angle and that axis will be marked as magnetic axis so let me draw one more axis here so this axis is called as the magnetic axis. So, whenever you bring the bar magnet to rest, which has been suspended freely, it always comes to rest in this axis and not in this axis. It never takes the geographic axis. It always comes to rest in the magnetic axis. And it is said that the angle between this geographic axis and the magnetic axis is around 11.3 degree and this va value may change after some time. For now presently this value is 11.3 degree. Now if this is the magnetic axis then this pole will be the magnetic north pole and this pole will be the magnetic south pole. So the pole which is near to the geographic north is taken as magnetic north. The pole which is near to the geographic south is taken to be as the magnetic south. There is one more plane which is perpendicular to this magnetic axis. The plane which is perpendicular to the magnetic axis and this plane is called as magnetic equator. I will explain once again, if this is the earth, this axis is the axis of rotation of the earth which is called as geographic axis 
and this pole will be the geographic north this is the geographic south whenever you bring the bar magnet to rest it always come to rest in the north south direction where it is been tilted by some degree that is 11.3 degrees and this axis will be taken as the magnetic axis and this will be the magnetic north and this is the magnetic south next the plane which is perpendicular to the geographic axis is taken as the geographic equator and the plane which is perpendicular to the magnetic axis is taken as the magnetic equator the magnetic field lines of the earth always pass from the north pole the magnetic north pole to the magnetic south pole now if i consider a bar magnet in a bar magnet the magnetic field lines always start from north to south and back to north that is outside the bar magnet the field lines are passing from north to south and inside the bar magnet it is passing from south to north coming to this you can see so inside earth the magnetic field lines are passing from north pole to south pole and when you come to the outside it passes from south to north so the magnetic field lines are starting from south pole towards north and from north to south which is reverse to what we have studied about the magnetic field properties so why is this this way so i'm going to explain it by assuming a bar magnet inside the earth this is not actually the case that is the bar magnet is not present inside the earth but uh, for simple explanation i am going to consider a bar magnet inside the earth now if i have a bar magnet inside the earth and i am going to consider this as the south pole and this as the north pole because whenever the magnetic compass comes to rest it always comes to rest in the north south direction the actual north the geographic north or the true north is this one and true south is this now if the magnetic compass needle is brought to rest it comes to rest in this direction that is north to south if this is the north pole and this is the south pole of the magnetic compass needle the poles of the bar magnet which i have assumed i have taken it as south and north because always we have studied that the unlike poles attract and the like poles repel if the magnetic compass needle has to come to rest in the north pole then it is attracted by the south pole of this bar magnet and that is the reason why this come always comes to rest in the north south direction that is whatever the magnetic north i have written it is the actual south pole and whatever the magnetic south i have written it is the actual north pole and because of that the magnetic needles whenever suspended freely come to rest in the north south direction that is they are attracted by the unlike poles because of this reason always the magnetic field lines start from north pole towards south pole and inside it moves from south to north that is what we have seen here the magnetic field lines are passing from north to south inside and south to north outside the earth now we have this earth where we have the axis of rotation which is called as geographic axis and we have the plane which is parallel to this geographic axis which is called as the geographic equator and whenever the magnet is suspended freely it comes to rest in this axis which is called as the magnetic axis this will be the magnetic north pole and magnetic south pole and as i have already told this is the actual south and this is the actual north pole and because of that the magnetic field lines are passing from north to south inside and south to north outside and we have one more plane which is perpendicular to this magnetic axis which is called as magnetic equator now it is time to define the three elements of the earth's magnetic field the elements of earth's magnetic field are the first one is declination which is denoted by the letter capital d second one is inclination it is also called as angle of dip and it's denoted by the letter capital i and the third one is the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field denoted by the letter h e 
Now let us see all these elements one by one. Now coming to the first element of the Earth's magnetic field, the magnetic declination, which is denoted by the capital letter D. Uh, before entering into this, I am going to define what are geographic meridian and magnetic meridian. So you have this geographic axis. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to draw an imaginary plane which is passing through this geographic axis. That is, we will draw an imaginary plane. This is the actual north, geographic north and geographic south of this uh, earth's magnetic field. Now, if I am going to draw a plane here which is passing through this geographic axis, then this plane itself is called as geographic meridian. So, you can note down geographic meridian is an imaginary plane which passes through the geographic axis, geographic north and south pole. And coming to magnetic meridian, it is again an imaginary plane which has been drawn and it passes through the uh, magnetic axis. So, the imaginary plane which you are going to take in case of this, that is, this is what the uh, magnetic north and magnetic south is. So, if I am going to draw an imaginary plane which consists of this magnetic axis, then this plane is nothing but the magnetic meridian. So, this is how it looks like. This is the geographic meridian and the this one, the one which I have uh, drawn in yellow chalk piece is the magnetic meridian. So, we have just cut this into two parts like I have taken a section. So, whatever the plane you are going to get is will be the geographic meridian which passes through this geographic axis and if I am going to cut like this, slice it in this direction, then I am going to get a magnetic meridian. I have two planes here and these two planes are making an angle and this angle is nothing but the declination, the magnetic declination. D. So, how do you define this magnetic declination? It is the angle between the geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian and this value D varies from place to place. If you are at the equator, you are in the geographic equator, then the declination will be small and as you go to the higher latitude, the value of this declination is going to increase. Therefore, the geographic equator will have minimum uh, value of D and in the higher latitudes, the value of D is going to increase. If you look at the uh, declination value in different places, the value of declination is going to vary from place to place and wherever the declination value is small, then there the uh, value will be accurate. The declination angle is very small, then you are going to, you are very near to the actual north. So, the value is very near to this actual axis that is geographic axis there the value will be accurate. Now this is the geographic north and geographic south. I have this magnetic needle and this magnetic needle will be pointing something like this in this direction. This angle is nothing but the angle of declination. Now if this angle of declination is small then we are towards the actual north right therefore if this d is small then the value will be very accurate when the needle is suspended freely it actually is pointing towards the actual north that is what it says in india the value of d is small uh, it is said that in delhi the value of d is observed to be 0 degree 41 minutes towards east and in Mumbai, the value is 0 degree 58 minutes towards west. So, the smaller the value of declination, more accurate will be the magnetic needle's direction. The next element is the inclination or angle of dip, uh, which is uh, denoted by the letter I. Now, this inclination or angle of dip can be defined as 
say if I have a magnetic needle which I am going to place in the on the surface of the earth then this magnetic needle sometimes is going to make a dip like this. So this is how the magnetic needle should be this is the north pole and this is the south pole sometimes it, at different places the magnetic needle is going to make a dip like this. So the north pole you can see is tilted below is dropping below. So this itself is called as dip. Now, how do I define this dip? So, this is the geographic meridian and this is the magnetic meridian. The total magnetic field is pointing somewhere here. This is the magnetic needle, the magnetic field, the net magnetic field is pointing in this direction which I am going to take as D. So, this is how it has dropped the magnetic needle. Now, this is the horizontal. I am going to mark this as HE. And this is the vertical. I am going to mark this as Z E. Now, this is actually the magnetic needle would have been like this. That is, it should be parallel to the earth surface. But it has been dropped. So, this will be the direction of the net magnetic field now. If this is the net magnetic field, then this is the horizontal component and this is its vertical component. And the angle between this net magnetic field and the horizontal is the angle of dip. So, what is angle of dip? How do you define angle of dip? Dip, the angle of dip is defined as the angle between the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field and the net magnetic field of the earth. So, this is what I is. So, let me define it. Angle of dip is the angle between the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field and the net magnetic field. So, there is an angle made by the net magnetic field and the horizontal component of the magnetic field. So, the, that angle itself is the angle of inclination or it is simply called as inclination or angle of dip. So, we have seen that the first element the declination is the angle between the geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian. And the second element, the inclination or which is also called as angle of dip, it is the angle between the net magnetic field of the earth and the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field. So, this is I. Now, we, are we have come to the last element that the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field. It is nothing but this HE, it is the horizontal component of this earth's magnetic field. Field. So, these are the three very important elements of the earth. Now, I can, I can write this HE that is the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field as if this is the angle I then what will be this HE? It is BE cos I. So, I am writing it in terms of BE then HE will be equal to BE cos I and what about ZE? Z is the vertical component of the earth's magnetic field and that Z E is equal to B E sin I. Now, if I divide them, what do I get? B E sin I by B E cos I is equal to Z E by H E. Now, this B and B E gets cancelled. Sin by cos is nothing but tan I. And tan I is equal to Z E by H E or I can write I as equal to tan inverse Z E by H E. And a very important thing you should all know is this inclination I, whatever I have defined here, the inclination I is equal to 0 at the equator. So, at equator, what happens at equator? 
the angle I will be equal to 0 and when you go to the pole that is at pole the I will be equal to 90 degree. So, the inclination will be 0 at the equator and inclination is 90 degree at the pole. You should remember them they are asked for 1 marks and all these elements the definition of the elements like dip inclination are also asked for 1 marks which is very important. So, here I am going to finish this session. Thank you.